subscribe and like us on YouTube and Facebook. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, once again to the Show Me God Ministry live stream. God bless you so much for joining us this uh, Wednesday. I hope you're going to get a blessing out of this meeting. Uh, my name is Evangelist Anya Tanga, Speaker, Director of the Show Me God Ministries. I will remind you again, friends, Show Me God Ministry is committed to preaching the present truth of our time to prepare a people to be ready for the coming of Christ. God bless you so much. Pray for this ministry as we also pray for you. Our topic for today is quite exciting. It is simply entitled, Missed Opportunities. Oh, the pain of missed opportunities. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the word you have in store for us. May you bless my brothers and sisters who are participating in this uh, worship service online. Bless each one of them. May they get something out of this and may they be drawn closer to you and remember them in your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Miss the opportunities. Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne founded a computer company in a garage in 1976. This company has grown to be so big, it is one of the best companies in the world. In 1976, these three guys named it Apple. The Apple computer company we know today was founded in a garage. And these three characters were there in the formative stage. But what happened is, but Wayne withdrew less than two weeks after founding Apple and receiving a 10% stake in the company, he sold his Apple stock for $800. He reportedly got another check later for $1,500 to forfeit any claims he had against the company going forward. He withdrew and uh, got $800, $1,500, and relinquished any claims. Had he remained, had he been patient, had he continued on, on the board of this company, his stock today, we are told, could have been $55 billion U.S. dollars. Had he continued, had he remained. Had he endured and had he, had he been patient? Today, Apple is the big, one of the biggest com computer companies. What a missed opportunity. He missed untold riches, $55 billion for $2,700. Friend, today, we are to draw lessons from this. There are many people today who are missing golden opportunities of remaining with Jesus Christ patiently, who are withdrawing instead of continuing with Christ, who are missing the golden opportunity, golden riches of eternal life. I hope you will continue with Christ, remain with Christ amidst all the challenges that we are facing in these last days. Hold on a little longer. Hold the fort a little longer. The Lord is coming your way to answer your prayers and is coming to get us into the kingdom of heaven. God bless you. Stay with us. I believe you are going to get the blessing that you needed most in this lesson. Today we look at a, 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 a rich young man who missed a golden opportunity to be one of the disciples of Jesus. The parable of the rich young man. There are great lessons for the remnant people of God in these last days in the, par in the story of the rich young man. Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. I'm going to, I'm going to read a couple of verses from Matthew chapter 19, please. Uh, keep your Bibles focused on Matthew chapter 19. Verse 16, it says, And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Here was a young man, rich, 
prosperous young man who desired eternal life to live forever in the kingdom of heaven with God and with Christ. So he came to Christ and asked a wrong question. It's a wrong question. You know why? He said, what good thing can I do to have eternal life? This gentleman believed in earning his salvation by good works. There are no good things that we need to do to have eternal life. We simply need to believe in Jesus, have faith in Jesus. Our works are as filthy rags. He, want, he was prepared to do anything good to have eternal life, but to believe in Christ. Verse 17 says of Matthew chapter 19, And he said to him, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. Jesus knew the heart of this young man. So he told him, son, if you will enter into life, if you will have eternal life, keep the commandments. And the young man responded. Verse 18, he said to him, sir, which ones? Jesus said, you shall do no murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And honor your father and your mother, and thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus wanted to help this young man, and he told him to keep the commandments. But we don't keep the commandments in order to have eternal life. We keep the commandments because we have been saved by Jesus. Jesus is the Savior. The commandments are a standard of righteousness. Nobody can keep the commandments of God properly when they don't believe in Jesus. So Christ knew this fellow and he told him, keep the commandments. See where Christ was getting. The young man said unto him, all these ten I have kept from my youth. What do I lack? Jesus knew that this guy was trying to keep the commandments by his own human effort apart from grace. For by grace are we saved. Jesus said, by grace are we saved through faith. We have to have faith in Jesus that the grace of God may transform us into obedient children. You can't be obedient without the transforming grace. So the young man boasted before the Lord and said, all these Ten Commandments I have kept. From my youth up to now, I don't know at what age he was, but he says from all, from all his days, from his youth, he kept all these Ten Commandments. In other words, he's saying, 10 out of 10, I am perfect. What stops me from entering into the kingdom? Do you think I lack anything yet? This young man was self-righteous. He examined himself and saw that he was good according to his own assessment. He could say, I'm, a, I'm an elder in the church already, in good and regular standing. I chair so many committees of the church. What lack I yet? I am regular every Sabbath I'm in church. What lack I yet? Does this sound like you, friend? Do you speak like this young man? He went and boasted before the Lord. How did Jesus respond to this young man? Jesus responded in verse 21. Jesus said to him, If you will be perfect, young man, since you said, what lack I yet? In other words, Jesus was saying, you are imperfect. Jesus said to him, if you will be perfect, go and sell all what you have. Give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Jesus loved this young man. He saw his zeal, his commitment. Then he said, the thing that you are lacking now, a rich young man, God has blessed you with great possessions. There are many people who are starving in the world today. The poor materially, the poor who lack food, the poor who lack shelter, and the poor spiritually, people who are hungering and thirsting for the gospel of Jesus. So uh, Jesus said to the young man, listen, I will give you eternal life. You follow me, sell all what you have, start funding the gospel, fund the mission of God to reach out to those who are hungering for the three angels' messages. 
expand the gospel that the word of God may be proclaimed and broadcasted on the airwaves, on the social media, and other platforms. Jesus might be saying the same to us today. And feed the hungry, the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. When you come and follow me, you follow me with all what God has given to you. Your means which are God-given are required to advance the gospel to feed the poor materially and spiritually. How did the young man uh, respond? Verse 22, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. The man who kept the commandments according to his own view, who had his own self-righteousness and own perfection, came to Christ desiring eternal life. The prince of life told him what to do. It, he proved that he was a legalist. He kept the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law, which is love. He did not love God, neither did he love his neighbor. Jesus brought him to realize what he lacked. There are many today who are regular in church, who chair so many committees at church level, district level, conference level, union, division, up the hierarchy, but are lacking the spirit of love. But they keep the commandments, the letter of the law, rigorously. This young man lacked redeeming love. He had no love for souls. He had no love for the salvation of his neighbors, his community, and the whole world. How did he respond to the master's request to invest in the kingdom? He missed an opportunity. He missed a golden opportunity. He responded by being heartbroken. He was so sorrowful at the words of Christ. He, he saw that according to himself, that Christ was unreasonable to demand his wealth for which he had worked so hard that he may just freely give it. The young man bl blamed the poor for being lazy and credited himself with hard work and intelligence and knowing how to invest. The, hard, the young man had no moisture of love at all in his heart. He was the kind of Sabbath keeper who was prepared to see people starve and die for physical food and spiritual food while he held his hoarded wealth. He had great possessions. Today, Jesus Christ knows his people in his church and outside the church that he has given means if these men and women loved God and loved Christ and loved the plan of salvation for souls, they would invest so much that the work of God would be finished much quicker than it is now. The work of God will not be moving at a total space as it is now. It's because there are people like the rich young man who want eternal life while steeped in selfishness and lovelessness. He had great possessions. When he heard this statement, he departed. He was sorrowful. The demands of love for the salvation of soul, the demands of the plan of salvation brings sorrow to all unconverted people. I want you to note this. The plan of salvation demands sacrifice. It demands sacrificial giving. The plan of salvation through Christ demands the disciples of Christ to reach out to support God's work. There are some people who are blessed with the Lord, with lots of means, just like the rich young man, who want to be worshipped, begged and praised before they release a single penny to advance the cause of Christ. Will these gentlemen and gentle women re uh, receive eternal life when Jesus comes? It's not good to be sorrowful. Remember, my friend, Jesus Christ left 
untold wealth in the kingdom of heaven to come and save souls. He left comforts. He left the society of the pure holy angels and other unfallen beings for redeeming love pushed him. He became poor that you and I may have a place in the kingdom. If we are truly his disciples and we know him truly, the spirit of sacrifice and the spirit of reaching out, the spirit of investing in the kingdom of God will imbue us and we shall not be sorrowful. We shall not be grieved. We will not need to be begged for us to advance the kingdom of God. Today, the world is starving for the three angels' messages. Today, the world is on the brink of the close of probation. Today, the mark of the beast can be uh, pro, uh, I mean, uh, announced to the world and legislated any time from now. And Jesus is appealing to his servants, whom he has b uh, blessed with means to support the gospel. But men are not willing. Only a few are participating. Will such have eternal life? Do you identify, dear friend, with this rich young man? Are you withholding means from the kingdom of God and selfishly aspiring to be in that kingdom? What do we learn from this young man? Are you missing golden opportunities when the master is calling for you and you are disappointed by the demands of love for the salvation of souls? The young man was offended, heartbroken, discouraged when Jesus said, go, sell, give to the poor. He became sorrowful in heart, grief and dejected. Friend, outward appearance, appearing like religious, appearing like obedient, keeping the letter of the law minus the spirit of the law, which is love, is just mere pharisaical. It's mere legalism. The boy said, from my youth up to this age, I've been keeping the commandments. What do I lack? All these years from the, his youth to that age, he was rigorous, his heart as dry as the hills of Gilboa. No moisture of love, no moisture of compassion. Does this describe you? Are you a sibling to this gentleman? He was keeping the Sabbath, by the way, but minus love. How many loveless people are they filling up God's church around the world? Men and women who, if they were willing, they could make a difference in the movement of the gospel, sooner or later the work would be finished. But they are sorrowful when they think of their great possession. The Bible says he went away sorrowful. The young man, on hearing the conditions that the Prince of Life offered him, turned around his horse and left Jesus behind. And he clung to his wealth. Jesus told him, come, follow me, sell out all what you have. The 12 disciples were standing there with Jesus. So Jesus was saying, young men, you see these men that are with me here. Some of them left their nets. They were fishermen. Some had their trades. They loved me to the point that they followed me and left what they were doing. Join these and let's go. The young men considered those ones as fools. He looked at Peter's face. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke shook his head in disagreement, turned his horse, and he rode away as a professional. He rode away. The devil was calling him to doom. For friend, if you turn your back on Jesus, you have no eternal life. If you turn your back on Jesus, the devil hastens you to kill you. We do not know what happened to that young man, but I'll say something towards the end of this message. I do not know what will happen to you, friend, if you turn your back on Christ. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. The hour is late. Ellen White says, All the hoarded wealth will soon to be uh, proved to be useless in these last days. The Bible talks that a time is coming when no man will buy or sell. When hoarded wealth will do no good. A time is coming when people will come to the servants of God and say, here yeah, are the means advance God's work. And she says, the servants of God will say, when we needed the means, you withheld them. Keep them 
because probation is closed. And all the heaped wealth will be evidence why certain men and women must not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is a fearful statement. Many people are missing golden opportunities. It is a privilege to be called by the master to invest in his kingdom. He went away, sorrowful, disappeared on the horizon. And uh, we know that that man died wherever he went. He saw that he had huge budgets for the next holiday, huge budget for the next cars, for the next fashionable objects. He was free to invest in the world than to invest in the advancement of the kingdom of God. The devil stung his heart, heart so hard like he stung Judas. This young man and Judas share something in common. Remember, my friend, when Mary came with expensive oil and perfume and poured it at the feet of Christ, one disciple complained and said, Oh, what a waste. What a waste. Judas considered it a waste to give Jesus wealth. The young man considered it a waste to invest in the kingdom of God. How many are like these two fellows who consider it a waste to give it to Christ? So Judas went and hung himself, and this guy went and died. I read a commentary uh, from Ellen White saying, The devil is tempting people to hold on to wealth. They think that time, there's still time. Blinded to the first fulfillment of prophecy. Men are supposed to be inquiring from God in serious prayer. Lord, what shall I do with the vast wealth you have given me? She says, if people pray like that, the Lord will reveal to them where they should invest in his kingdom. But if they don't ask, he will not reveal it to them. And they will perish. It says the devil wants people to die so that at their funeral, their unbelieving relatives will then take the possessions. Some of the goods and means that were meant to advance the gospel will be used by non-believing relatives uh, for prostitution, brothels, and uh, all sorts of things, trafficking, liquor, drugs. It says in the resurrection, all people who withheld means from Christ will be shown the evidence why they should not be saved, how their wealth became a curse after they were dead. We don't need any deathbed benevolence. While we are alive and conscious, let's give to the Lord. He went away sorrowful. He had great possessions. He was attached to, to, to money and detached from Christ. He missed the opportunities that this young man missed. Number one, this young man had he followed Christ and obeyed. He could have been one of the disciples. He could have written a book in the New Testament named after his name, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. For the love of this world, <laughs> missed opportunity. The young man missed. His name should, could have been written on the doors of the entrance of the New Jerusalem, just like the other disciples. Missed opportunity. This young man missed the baptism at Pe Pentecost by the Holy Spirit. Missed opportunity because of selfishness. All the pain of missed opportunities. This young man missed eternal life for the love of money. Missed opportunity. What can you learn from this young man? The Lord is simply saying, son, invest in the advancement of the kingdom. I believe those who love God, it is time for them to ask of the Lord thankfully and say, Lord, thank you for blessing me with such means. How do you want me to invest at a time like this when the mark of the beast is first coming? When no man will buy or sell? What shall I do, Lord? Humble yourself. The Bible says it is the Lord who gives you power to get wealth. And when your silver and your gold is increased, Deuteronomy 8 says, you shall fear the Lord your God. Do not depart from him or forget him. That young man, he died in sin and left great wealth, and it went into unbelieving relatives. Friend, will your wealth disappear into your, the hands of your unbelieving relatives who use your houses, your properties, your cars for activities that dishonor God? On the resurrection day, friend, you are waking up to meet your judgment. This message is coming to you to give you hope. It's a privilege to be called by the master to invest in his kingdom. I want to, uh, to, to thank God for this message. 
There are many people who are ready to do God's work, but there are others who must facilitate. The preaching of the gospel is like fighting a war. There are those on the front line, and there are those who are supplying supplies that the war may be won. The great controversy war needs you to take your rightful place. We are on the brink of the end of time. Jesus is coming again. Withhold nothing from the master, and you, you have eternal life. Obey the Lord, for he gave you means for a purpose. I want to thank God this, uh, this evening. Um, I want to invite you, friend, to surrender your life to Christ, to humbly ask the Lord, what shall I do, Lord, at a time like this with the means you have given me? Assets can be converted to means. Whatever assets you have, livestock, cars, houses, buildings, shares, you know, your shares in the stock market, you can convert them to advance the gospel. Why will Jesus not say to you on that day, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in little things, inherit the kingdom of God and possess much riches. I want to pray with you. If it is the decision of your heart, commit yourself in your heart as I pray that the Lord may bless you, make a difference in the finishing of God's work. God bless you so much. We are praying. Father in heaven, we do thank you for teaching us a great message. You are blessing us in these last days that we may invest in the advancement and the finishing of your gospel work. Bless my brothers and sisters as they have heard this message. Take away sorrow uh, from their hearts. When Jesus says, invest in the kingdom, give them joy to do it gladly, willingly, for God loves a cheerful giver. Preserve your people from this COVID pandemic that they may do your work, Lord, cheerfully. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you've been blessed, my brothers and sisters, in this service. We want to ask you to give us a thumbs up on our Facebook page. Please like our page, share with many people. And also, we have a YouTube uh, channel that we run there. Please subscribe, hit the red button. All the uploads that we make, you are going to be the first one to be notified. Uh, God bless you so much until we meet again. Amen and amen. Show Me God Ministries. Advancing the Three Angels Message Digitally.